Greetings, I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another Hobo Technos product review. Red Odo, formerly known as Zoom's battery, offers a sizable range of self-contained lithium iron phosphate drop-in replacement batteries. They just released this new 100 amp hour battery with a smart BMS system that offers a wide range of features, including the coveted low temperature charging protection. And this is at a bargain basement price. But is it any good? Let's find out. Inside this 12 volt battery are 100 amp hours of lithium iron phosphate grade A cells rated at over 4,000 cycles to 80% capacity at 100% depth of discharge. As for size and weight, it's approximately 11 by eight by eight inches, weighing in at only 25 pounds. The internal BMS or battery management system is rated for 100 amps, both charge and discharge, which is equivalent to 1,280 watts. As for series and parallel ability, this 100 amp hour battery can be stacked in series up to 48 volts or four batteries, and that up to four rows in parallel for a total of 16 batteries and 20.4 kilowatt hours of juice. Does have an ABS plastic case, which is completely sealed, However, I couldn't find on the battery or in the documentation anywhere any kind of IP rating, but it does look like it could be weather resistant. What about protections? The Red Odo offers both high and low temperature protection, along with the typical short circuit protection, overcharge and discharge protections. So stick around, we're gonna go ahead and test that low temperature charging protection in the next segment. As for hardware, it does come with a nylon carrying strap, which can be easily removed. It does include four M8 bolts along with the plastic protective caps and lock washers and standard washers so that you can lock down your battery cables without any issues. Also to note, they give you a really nice color packet along with some stickers if you like the Red Auto logo, a color manual with all kinds of really good features in here telling you how you can figure out your discharge rates and it gives you the uh, lithium iron phosphate curves how to hook up your batteries. Uh, it's all in here. They pretty much cover everything you could probably think of when it comes to lithium iron phosphate drop-in batteries, including how to set them up in both series and parallel. So fantastic user manual. Now as for the warranty, Red Auto does offer a five-year manufacturer's warranty across the board for all of their batteries. So of course I took the Red Auto 100 amp hour smart battery into my secret laboratory here where I performed all kinds of crazy experiments on it, including, yes, a single fisted battery capacity test. As for the results of the DC battery capacity test, the 100 amp hour battery scored 103 amp hours out of the rated 100, which is typical for grade A cells. Discharge test, this is where we determine how much power can we pull from the battery before it shuts itself down. These batteries have a BMS or battery management system inside, which is supposed to regulate how much power can go in or out. So we're gonna test that feature right now. One of the things that's a little bit different from this battery than other batteries is that it actually has a power button on the top that allows you to turn on and off the BMS. So you can see right here, this is lit up blue. Now, if I actually hold this button down and turn this battery off, it will physically turn off the output of the battery. So what it does is it shuts the BMS off and then the residual power that's in there drains out. And we can watch the voltage gradually turn down to zero and then the light will turn off. This is an interesting feature because it allows you to put this thing into basically deep sleep for storage. You don't have to worry about the BMS inside consuming energy over time. You can just physically turn it off with this button, which is kind of cool and it is color coded. So it turns green or red and it tells you in the book what the green and red lights mean. For example, this has low temperature charging protection. So it tells you down here if the light turns red while you're using it and it's below 32 degrees, it turns red because it no longer allows you to charge it. And then it turns green again once 
the temperature raises. So let's do the discharge test first and see how much power we can pull from this thing. Okay, we're at 96 amps, 106 amps, 116, 126, 140 ish. And it shuts down at 140. Okay, let's do a surge test and see. At 330 amps, it stops at eight seconds. At 140 amps, eight seconds. Okay, so we know that it will shut off in eight seconds, 140 amps. Let's try 120 amps. So about 12 seconds. Now for the extended runtime test, we're gonna run this for at least five minutes at 110 amps to see if it can cut it. If not, we'll back down to 100. Well, there you have it, five minutes at 108 amps, no problem. Okay, I decided for S's and G's to go ahead and run this an additional 10 minutes, so 15 minutes total at 108 amps. The reason why I did that is I wanna see if this overheats or not. Typically on these tests, on these reviews for these batteries, they don't cut off so soon. Like this has a proper BMS that's cutting me off above 110 amps. So if I try to pull more than 110, it just shuts itself off. Uh, typically on these kinds of batteries, it'll let me pull 200 amps for a couple of minutes before it actually overheats then shut off. So I can't get the battery to overheat. So I figured I would let it run for 15 minutes, now going on 16 minutes at 108 amps to see does it overheat. And so far it has not, so I'm gonna consider this a pass. This next test is going to be the charge rate test. So we're gonna use this 120 amp charger from the Sun Gold Power 4000 watt inverter to pump 120 amps into this battery. Now we'll see, does that immediately trigger the safety of the battery? Because the battery is only supposed to support 100 amps of charging or discharging. So we'll try this test first and take it from there. There is the charger at maximum, 116 amps, and it cut off. There you go. Again, we have the lime light. So it goes from green to lime when it runs into an alarm or an error. So it should reset itself here in a moment and then allow me to charge again. See, it's green. Watch, it'll turn lime once it trips. And there it goes, it tripped. All right, there we go. We're charging at 120 amps. See how long it'll take it. All right, it takes 16 seconds and then it kills it. Let's see how long recovery takes for it to turn itself back on. All right, took about 22, 23 seconds for it to reset itself. Okay, so there you have it. It will not charge at 120 amps. So let's go ahead and back it down to 109 amps and see if it'll take it there because it seemed to allow a discharge of 109. Let's see if it allows for a charge of 109. Okay, we're gonna restart the test and it's fluctuating quite a bit between about 98 and 104. So we're gonna say it's just over 100 amps or so. We'll let this run for five minutes and make sure that it can handle at least this amount of charging. Okay, we're coming up on five minutes and it looks like since we stabilized around 103, 104 amps, we're able to run for five minutes uninterrupted, no problems, no shutdowns. So we're gonna consider this a pass since it was able to charge above its 100 amp rate. So there's one final test I wanna perform that's mentioned right here in the user manual. That's the low temperature charging protection. So it says right here in the manual that once the temperature of the cells go down below 32 degrees Fahrenheit or freezing, the temperature protection kicks in, this light will change color and it will not allow you to charge. And then once it warms up above, I think it's 41 degrees, yeah, 41 degrees Fahrenheit, once it warms up above that, the light will change color again and they'll allow you to charge. Now there is an override. So let's say you don't care about damaging your battery. You're just gonna override it. It's an emergency situation. You really have to charge it below freezing. So the procedure is right there. It tells you exactly what you need to do. So we're gonna go ahead and test all these features. That means I have to get this battery below freezing and the fastest and easiest way I can think of is to drop this thing into my deep freezer. All right, we're gonna put you right on top of the toaster strudel. And we'll be back once your light changes color. 328 AM. Okay, several hours later, I finally pulled the battery out of the deep freezer. The light changed from green to yellow or lime. It looks more like lime than yellow, but it has changed color and now this is getting wet because of all the humidity of the air. It is below freezing. You can see I have it hooked up to this charger. It is not charging. 
I have it set to 14.8, zero amps are going through, so the battery does stop it from charging below freezing. You can see the proof right here, 14.8 volts, zero amps going through. Nothing at all. And the light remains that yellowish lime color. Now, anyway, that'll give you sort of an idea what the color of the light is. It's yellowish, lightish green. Now, when it's a dark green, that means everything's good. In this case, it means low temperature charging protection is turned on. So it says here in the book, you push the button and then short press it again in five seconds. So I think that means you short press it twice in five seconds. So let's give that a try and see if it turns color and starts charging. There it is, it's green and it's starting to charge. So uh, in order to prevent damage from the battery, I'm obviously not gonna charge it, but it did actually charge for a second at 10 amps. So it is back in regular mode as if it didn't have low temperature protection. So it's a pretty cool option to give you if there's an emergency situation where you do need to charge this below freezing at risk of damaging the battery now. Now it's not always gonna damage a, a lithium battery if you charge it just below freezing. There is a limit. Like once you get down to a certain temperature, you're guaranteed to destroy the battery. And in this case, it says right here in the manual, because forcing charging when the battery temperature is lower than five degrees Fahrenheit will damage a battery. The low temperature force charging function will not be enabled when the battery temperature is lower than five degrees. So I guess if you're in an emergency situation where it's below five degrees Fahrenheit, you're SOL, because you can't bypass it at that point, the bypass no longer works. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the battery off and turn it back on again. Yeah, it goes right back into allowing you to charge. Let's just double check that. Yes, it does. Okay, so even turning it off and back on again doesn't reset it to do the low temperature protection. It pretty much is now off indefinitely until the battery warms back up again. So what about doing a teardown on this battery? Well, I decided to not do a teardown in this case for a few reasons. First, the innards of their 100 amp hour battery are already all over the internet, so why waste my time or yours chopping the top off of this and tearing it apart? Second, the last time I tore down a battery, it received literally less than half the views of my previous battery review where I didn't do a teardown. No, that didn't make any sense to me, especially since that video where I didn't do the teardown was a few minutes shorter and that battery was cheaper. So it should have gotten way more views than the other one where I didn't do the teardown. So clearly what this tells me is that most of you folks just don't really care about the teardowns. Now, does this mean I'm not gonna do teardowns in the future? No, that does not. I will do them at my discretion, mainly to new market products. I know this is probably something that would be considered a new market product, but the battery inside is not gonna be any different than their 100 amp hour option. So what do I think about the Rododo Smart 100 amp hour battery? Well, there are dozens, if not hundreds of brands of LFP batteries out there today. Most of them you can't pronounce, and most of them offer little in terms of warranty. Rododo, formerly known as Zoom's battery, have been around for several years now, and they're known as one of the best cheap bang for the buck batteries out there, and they managed to garner themselves quite a reputation. Now, there are very few brands in the sub 30 cents per watt hour range that offer a true working low temperature protection and a five year warranty. That to me sets this battery apart from the rest. I was also impressed with their tightly controlled BMS. It allows a little bit of headroom past 100 amps, but then shuts down as it should. I couldn't get it to overheat, and the option to turn it off completely via the cool button on the top is something unique and kind of cool. That allows you to turn a battery off for long-term storage. The light will even tell you when the battery reaches end of life, or when the temperature protection kicks in. It'll just turn a different color and let you know that something's going on. Now, all these features are only a few bucks more than their standard 100 amp hour battery, and to me, that extra expense is a no-brainer. Now, as I've said in virtually every other LFP battery review, these are not designed to starter batteries. Don't buy one for your tractor or your hot rod thinking you're gonna start it up with one of these. These aren't designed to starter batteries. Now, you can use them for small trolling motors. You can use them to start the generator in your RV. It's not an issue because those are all loads under 100 amps. The recommended inverter size for a single battery like this is gonna be about 1,500 watts or 2,000 watts. That's fine too because you do wanna have a little overhead in your inverter. 
The output limit in this is 1280 watts. You still want to be able to handle a startup load. So you could put a 2000 watt inverter on this, start up an air conditioner or a refrigerator. As long as the mean running watts is not over 1280, you'll be just fine. Now, of course, you can just take two of these batteries, wire them in parallel and double your amps and you can run 2500 watts all day long. In that case, I'd suggest a 3000 or even a 4000 watt inverter. I do have some recommended inverters available on my product page at hobotech.tv under inverters. Product price, the 100 amp hour smart battery lists for 379, which in of itself is a fantastic price for something that actually has a working low temperature cutoff. But for a limited time with the hobo discount below, that price is gonna drop to 357. This is the deal of the century for a 100 amp hour battery with truly regulated BMS features and that low temperature charging protection. I did review their 200 amp hour plus battery last year and it was really a great bang for the buck. Now many other channels on YouTube have torn apart Red Odo or Zoom's batteries over the years and every time they found quality components inside. So remember, you also get a five-year warranty for this price too. So if you're interested in the Red Odo batteries, the link and discount code will be in the description of this video below. I'm also gonna put a link here at the bottom of the screen along with a QR code that you can scan on a mobile device that'll take you on over to the Red Odo store page where you can add it to your cart, throw in that discount code and get it for a fantastic price. Note that the discount code I'm giving you below actually works across the board for their entire website. So. And if you don't want to get this battery, you want to get one of their other batteries or some kind of other package that they offer, go ahead and use that discount code to get a certain percentage off. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me that thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. RV Golf Guy, Brian Blue, Bruce Johnson, Jason Soroka, Marcus T. Bison.